Hi everybody and happy World Endometriosis Day. Um, today is a really, really important day because we are creating awareness on endometriosis, which is a very important condition for each of you to know. That's why I'm in yellow. Keep watching. What's endometriosis? Endometriosis is a condition that affects women in the reproductive ages. So this is women who are from 14 anywhere to 45 to 50, whenever your menses ends. Um, what it is, is that the lining, I'll just take out my structure now. And the endometrium is the, the lining of the uterus. So what happens in endometriosis is that this lining is not only in the endometrium, but it has spread to all parts of the body. It can literally spread to the brain, to the lungs, to any actual part of the body. So commonly it may occur in the tubes, that this lining is in the tubes, or that it's in the ovaries, or at the back of the uterus, or as I've said, in the lungs or in the brain. And what this does is every time you have a period, because this is the lining that is shed during your menstrual cycle, then the little implants that are all over also bleed. And what does that do? It causes lots of pain. So these women who suffer from endometriosis have very, very painful periods. You can imagine periods, um, the blood from the periods can exit through the uh, birth canal, but what's on the uterus, on the tubes, in the lungs, in the brain, doesn't have an escape. So what happens, it swells and it causes some inflammation, which causes pain. So the first symptom of endometriosis is painful periods, extremely painful periods. So some of these women are, are unable to go to work because of the pain. And that's a very important thing to know that if you're having periods that are extremely painful, you've popped a brufen, popped a paracetamol, nothing's happening, you, and some of you have to go into a casualty to actually get an injection, it could be a sign of endometriosis. This is one of the most important signs. Um, other signs of endometriosis could be congestion in the lower pelvic area. Um, you could have um, sometimes, not very often, you could have bleeding in between your cycle with endometriosis. When the endometriosis has gone to the bladder, like it does, sometimes does, you could have urine that is blood stained during your menstrual cycle because you're bleeding from your bladder. You could also have um, stool that is blood stained because you're bleeding from the rectum if it has gone to the rectum. And for some people who have extreme cases, you could have bleeding into your lungs that could cause lots of problems or even bleeding into your brain that could actually cause people to have fits. So it is, um, it is an array of symptoms that could occur. The, the, the last two are extremely rare, but they can occur. So what can we, what can we do about endometriosis? Because those are just signs and symptoms, but what do we do about it? How do we, for, um, for example, diagnosis, um, diagnose it? Unfortunately, the diagnosis of endometriosis is very difficult. We can presume that it is if you have painful periods, but most of the time we have to go in um, for a laparoscopy, which is an operation that actually will show the implants in all those areas. Um, some people can, uh, uh, some people are diagnosed by scans, but it is not a conclusive diagnosis. The only, um, the gold standard in diagnosis is to have a laparoscopy, which may be out of reach for a lot of people, unfortunately. Um, how do we treat it? Now, I think the most important thing to know about endometriosis is it's a chronic condition. So for most clients or for most people, it's not something that we, you know, treat and it's gone. It is something that we try to manage, unfortunately. And how do we manage it? Um, first off, we try lifestyle. And, and um, a lot of uh, debate is going on about lifestyle changes that help endometriosis. And there's something called an endo diet. Go look up on it. And that can help a lot of women. It has helped a lot of my clients. You stop the wheat, stop um, the dairy, and really your periods pain does reduce. It's not for everybody and it doesn't alleviate everybody's pain, but it alleviates a lot of women's pain. The other thing that we can do is give medicine. And um, mostly uh, at the first instant, we try with analgesic medicine, which is painkillers. 
So we'll start you off with some paracetamol if that works well and good. Some people it doesn't work and we have to go to the stronger and stronger uh, painkillers. And when we can't um, use painkillers anymore, then we probably will have to go to the hormonal um, medications. And in this, we give some hormones that will suppress your ovaries and, uh, and not let you ovulate, but it does then allow you not to have a period and therefore the pain is diminished. Um, so that's um, the sequence of how we treat it. In some women, it's too far gone and we have to surgically excise the implant. So we go in laparoscopically and try and remove all the implants. And this um, helps a lot. So how does um, endometriosis affect our fertility? Endometriosis is um, one of those conditions which we really don't like because a lot of women who come with endometriosis have already had it for very many years and it has affected um, their reproductive system. So one of the things that is obvious about it is that when it's on our ovaries, it um, diminishes the number of follicles that we have and affects them. So we do find already that we have a reduced number of eggs in our ovaries and therefore the chances of having a baby are reduced. Not in every woman, but in women who it has gone into the ovary, that's uh, something that's very common. So that's one of the ways. But it also acts in very strange ways and causes some inflammation, which we're not sh really sure what it does, but it does affect implantation, which is when the baby implants on the back of the uterus. It does affect our tubes. We've had blocked tubes because of endometriosis. The implants have gone and blocked the tubes because of chronic bleeding inside the tubes they've closed. So it does affect fertility in a lot of ways. So I'm not saying this to scare you or to make everybody run here if you have endometriosis, but I'm just doing this as a caution to women with endometriosis that they should see their doctors early. Um, and if you desire fertility or desire children, then please do make a point of seeing a fertility specialist earlier on if you have endometriosis, because it does really make a difference. And I think I would not end this well without um, mentioning all the women out there who are suffering from endometriosis. It's a condition that I wouldn't wish upon anybody. It's chronic, it's debilitating, it's so painful, it's an emotional roller coaster for a lot of women. And I do sympathize with you, all the endo warriors out there, we are together. And this is just to educate women that there is something that can be done. You do not have to suffer in silence. You should be proud and carry the crown. Thanks for watching. This is Dr. Wanjiro Ndegwa and you're watching Footsteps to Fertility.